I have seen a lot of comments on the Steam Deck dev stream deep dive video we did a couple weeks ago explaining how the Steam Deck and SteamOS is going to have an immutable file system. Instantly, people were in an uproar. People hear immutable and they think that they can't install Lutris or Heroic Games Launcher, which is an unofficial Epic Games Store client for Linux, or unable to create mods for games, or unable to make or restore a backup of your data. So we wanted to clear up a few of the misconceptions here. First of all, what is an immutable file system? The term immutable means unable to be altered. The term immutable therefore implies that the OS's files can't be modified unless Valve ships an update for SteamOS, or the end user runs a specific command to unlock the file system. This means that the OS partition will be read-only, and will only be mounted as writable when there's a SteamOS upgrade being applied or when the deck is set to dev mode, which we'll get to in a minute. If you've used Chrome OS, Chimera OS, or Fedora Silverblue for that matter, you might already have been aware of this term and the applications thereof, as these operating systems use an immutable file system as well. So the question is, why is it necessary and why is it a good thing? Now, one of the most obvious reasons why Valve chose an immutable file system is the fact that they're just less prone to malware. The only entity that can modify the core OS files is Valve, and that should be pretty dang secure. Even if some third-party entity were able to hack into your Steam Deck since they don't have right access to the core OS, they can't do a whole lot of damage. Additionally, this prevents the user from inadvertently installing third-party software at the OS level, which could result in system instability. And on a game system like the Steam Deck, that's the last thing that you want, especially when you have noobs like this playing on it. Did I manage to completely nuke my desktop environment, like my GUI? Second, updates on SteamOS won't run the risk of clobbering any changes you might have made to the system files, meaning that if you went into the file system trying to do X, Y, or Z by following a random guide you found online, you changed a few files and then maybe you updated your SteamOS install, well then those files might be overwritten by the update, reverting your changes back to the stock OS, or perhaps they weren't overwritten, which could cause unexpected behavior after the update. Importantly, immutability of the core OS files provides a consistent environment for Steam, for game developers, for the games that are running on the system, and for end users. If an update breaks, the problem lies with Valve or the game developer, not with you as the end user. This keeps support tickets to a minimum and ensures a smooth experience running SteamOS or the game that you're playing. This keeps the user experience simple. If you're looking for a more advanced Linux distro, use something else. SteamOS 3.0 was designed with simplicity in mind, and an immutable file system prevents the user from accidentally installing apps or doing things beyond what SteamOS was meant to do, and that's play games. So I can hear you asking, if I can't write to the file system, how do I download games? Well, SteamOS 3.0 was designed specifically for gaming. This segment in the video was originally going to be speculation on our part, but then I reached out to Pierre-Lou Griffet on Twitter, he's one of the chief guys behind SteamOS and Proton at Valve, and I asked him straight up, on the Steam Deck dev stream, there was talk of an immutable file system. I am assuming that this means that the OS is mounted as read-only, right? And that would mean that Steam games and non-Steam software are installed on a separate user-writable partition? And he replied. By default, yes, and you get updates via new images for the read-only partition after a quick reboot. You can easily go read-write with a single command and start using Pac-Man. You can stay like that or reapply an image and start with a clean root FS. Now to clarify all of that, because there is a bit of jargon there, for Windows users, it would be as if you had Windows and only Windows installed on your C drive, and that your C drive was read-only. Then your games and other applications are installed on a separate partition on the same SSD. This means that the user partition will be writable, and it's where you can install Steam games and non-Steam software too. So, there's two partitions, the OS drive, what we in Linux call the root partition, and then the user partition that will allow the installation of Steam and non-Steam titles. It's pretty straightforward actually, and honestly as a Linux expert, I think that it's the right move here. It's something that I was calling for in SteamOS 1.0. 
So the question is, what does it mean for gamers? Well, an immutable file system really doesn't mean anything for gamers. It basically just keeps the OS experience seamless. You turn the Steam Deck on, you log into Steam, you download your games and start playing. There's no need to fuss about with keyboards or mice. There's no need to install other software. And the plug and play nature it offers gives the device a console-like experience. Though it might seem like a limitation at first glance, it actually keeps things simple for everyone. And we here at Heavy Element think it's the right move. There could be people who play exclusively on console who have never been a PC gamer. They might have ordered a Steam Deck, and this keeps things straightforward to them. There's less tinkering that needs to happen, and there's just less hassle. That being said, gamers are allowed to install other software outside of Steam, even without needing to enable dev mode. If you want, you can even wipe SteamOS and install any other operating system, including Windows, on your machine, though we believe that that would be a huge mistake. There's a video up here if you want to see that one. So what does it mean to actually install third-party software then? Uh, it basically, if you want to install third-party software on the Steam Deck, Valve straight up said that flat packs are supported out of the box. But what is a flat pack? Well, it's a self-contained software package that has all the resources and libraries that the app needs in order to run without requiring the host operating system to install or manage dependencies. That's important because if you're familiar with how Linux distros work, they have a package manager that installs all the software an app might need in order to run. Since the OS's files will be read-only, Flatpaks will be a perfect solution for this kind of setup, since they come with everything that you need. But what if Flatpaks aren't enough and you want to install native software packages in the OS? Well, that's where developer mode comes in. We don't have the exact specifics on how enabling developer mode will work, but Pierre Lou did say it's as simple as running a single command in the terminal. And that's good because the terminal is scary to a lot of people, and for the vast majority of folks, enabling developer mode is not something that they should ever need to do. Since dev mode on the Steam Deck will allow you to modify the CoreOS files at will, and you could potentially break something. But it's there for anyone who knows what they're doing and doesn't mind getting their hands dirty, tweaking and having a good time with the OS. And after enabling dev mode, you can install whatever software at the OS level that you want. Since SteamOS 3.0 is based on Arch Linux, you can even install software through Pac-Man and virtually anything else that's available through the AUR. Yeah, but doesn't an immutable file system violate like the spirit of Linux and user freedom and whatever? Look, Nothing is preventing you from installing whatever software you want on your Steam Deck. You can install whatever operating system you want, Ubuntu, Arch, Fedora, or even Windows. Immutable just refers to the way that the core files are protected, and that's a good thing. And SteamOS isn't unique here. There are several instances of this being the case already. Fedora Silverblue bills itself as an immutable desktop operating system. Most of the directories, including the rootFS, are mounted as read-only. This makes for a rock-solid and extremely stable user experience, and this is exactly how SteamOS plans to operate. Chimera OS is essentially a console-like gaming distro, much like SteamOS, albeit with different enhancements. After installation, Chimera OS boots right into Steam Big Picture mode, and Chimera OS uses the same method as SteamOS 3.0. It keeps the file system immutable. And on Chimera OS, third-party applications can only be installed by using the Chimera web app. So for what Valve is trying to do with the Steam Deck, having an immutable root file system makes perfect sense, especially when their target audience for this device are non-Linux users who can seriously break their OS if they're trying to go into the terminal and monkey around. What is the point of having a... Oh. So as we've seen in this video, SteamOS 3.0 using an immutable file system will bring a number of benefits, including it being less prone to malware, maintain a consistent environment for Valve, Steam games, and game developers, and most importantly, end users. That being said, the Steam Deck is essentially a PC, meaning that you can install other software or operating systems on it if you don't like what you get out of the box. But even outside of developer mode, SteamOS 3.0 will be able to install flat packs, and developer mode will allow Linux enthusiasts write access to the root file system, no problem. Valve is not creating a barrier here for anyone, and seeing this as anything other than a good thing for gamers is, in our opinion, just tilting at windmills. 
That's going to do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to say thank you to our patrons over on Patreon, our YouTube members here on YouTube who make what we do here possible. If it wasn't for them, we simply wouldn't be able to do this. We've been able to dedicate more time and bring on staff to help support this show. So I want to say thanks to all the people who are making this show what it is. Uh, that's going to do it for now, though. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.